Welcome to the review of Death live at Pandorica in Bristol. We are recording the Day of the Doctor review. Mm. It's me, Matt, with Billy. Say hello, Billy. Hello, 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 Billy. Hello, Billy. Well done. I was well trying done. to avoid that joke because it's overdone. We do it so many times. We do. It's really bad. We do. Um, so yeah, uh, what we've been doing on the podcast, if you've not kind of listened before, at the moment we're reviewing Flux. So those listening, uh, we are a day away from. Uh, once upon time. Is yes. everybody enjoying Flux at the moment? Yeah? Yes. Doesn't good. it feel good? No one's fighting each other anymore on Twitter. It's really lovely. Um, yeah, and so when we're not reviewing Flux, what we've been doing is going through the DWM 2014 poll. If anybody remembers that, it ranked every story from an unearthly child through to, was it Time of the Doctor? Was that the last? Oh no, it was Day of the Doctor. It was Day of the Doctor. Day yeah. of the Doctor. And Day of the Doctor came number one in that poll. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Twin Dilemma came at the bottom. Yeah, I, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um, so yeah, what we've been doing is sort of going from the bottom, working our way up. But we thought because this is about as close as to the anniversary as we can get, you know, recording wise this yep. year, we thought we'd do the Day of the Doctor today. Um, and and we, we try and decide like. whether or not it really deserves number one spot out of all of Doctor Who is no, the best story? I know, mm. and it, it's a bit bonkers. I mean, last night, I, I, I watched it last night and made some notes, and I, I put a tweet out and said, what is it, honestly, what does everybody think of it? Because I know it's an anniversary special, and yeah. I know sometimes you can't critique that in the same way that you would any average episode of Doctor Who on a Saturday or a Sunday night. But it's not immune to criticism just because it's an anniversary special, you know? And like with the five doctors, you know, that's obviously got a very, very special place in a lot of people's hearts who watch that going out live. Yep. Just as for people who grew up with the show when it came back in 2005, they've probably got a very, very different perspective possibly on Day of the Doctor compared, compared to, to other us, stuff. Yeah. Because really, and I don't know if this sounds controversial, it's not really a 50th anniversary special, is it? It's, well, it's, this is this it's is a celebration of the last 15 I, I years. I put in my notes: is this an eighth anniversary special? Yeah, because it is very new series heavy. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, it's just you're also missing a third of that because Chris isn't in it. Yeah, and you've got John now. And as great as John Hurt is, that was our moment to get Chris back in Doctor Who. Yes, I'm so happy he's back for Big Finish, and he's been doing exceptionally well with Big Finish. Mm -hmm. But that was, that was it. Russell's it, it was coming a missed back. There's zero chance Chris is coming back once Russell's taking over, let's all be honest. So that was it. Yeah. And it's just because Stephen couldn't deliver the scripts on time that Chris went, a bit bored of waiting now, actually, and uh, so I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And they've got John Hurt instead. Yeah. So. Well, I think actually they were, I think Stephen was thinking about Paul McGann, but the BBC turned around and said, no, you promised us the Olympics of Doctor Who. Apparently, Paul McGann wasn't good enough for the Olympics of Doctor Who, which is terrible because Paul McGann deserved his second go. Obviously, we got Night of the Doctor, which was amazing, and it was fantastic to see mm. Paul come back. We and won't um, just talk what about a surprise! Day of the Doctor as well. We'll do the whole week. We'll of do Doctor the whole Who week. programming because it was, you know, obviously exceptional. But can you remember when that came out? When Night of the Doctor came out? Yeah. I remember it vividly. I was, I was at school. I was at sixth form, and somebody told me as I walked into a class. Oh, Paul McGann, you know, doc the doctor's back. And I was like, oh yeah, he's been doing Big Finish for ages. And they went, no, he, he's, he's done like an episode that's just gone on the iPlayer. And so I, I can't believe my teacher let me do this. I said, can I just go out for like 20 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> and I walked, to, I walked to the IT room at the end of the corridor and there was another class happening in there. And I said, sorry, Miss has just said, it's all right if I just do something really quickly. And I sat down, plugged my headphones in and I watched Night of the Doctor and <laughs> Oh my God. I don't think I've ever felt such uh, I, I was numb watching yeah, it. I was yeah, yeah. like, I can't believe I'm actually seeing this happening. Yeah. He's back as the doctor. Yeah. So it's I, 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 mine was a similar experience, as in it was education-based. Mm. So I was about to go to a lecture. I was about to leave home to, to drive to university. And um, there, th it had been revealed that there was going to be this Minnesota thing on iPlayer. And I thought, oh, I'll just have time to watch it before I get in the car and go. And I think there have been some sort of murmurings on Gallifrey Base or one of the forums that, oh, maybe Paul McGann's going to come back. Murmurings on Gallifrey Base about everything. Yeah, day. and I think, you know, everyone just sort of goes, uh, okay. And it happened. And it was just me and my dad in the house. And I think I must have just yelled at the top of my voice, Paul McGann's back! And my dad was like, what? And I said, you'll never believe this. Paul McGann's back as Doctor Who. They've got Paul McGann back as Doctor Who. And he was like, 
oh, okay, all right. <laughs> and then I rushed into university, like buzzing. I'm surprised I never had, a, never had an accident. A lot. And um, I was going to a lecture on fandom, and we did a lot about Doctor Who. So I came in, and my lecturer was like, you all right? You seem very excited. I said, you'll never believe it. Paul McGann's come back to Doctor Who. So we did a whole thing on why that was important, because everyone else in my class didn't like Doctor Who. So they were like, why, what does that matter? Who, who's Paul McGann? I was like, who's Paul McGann? Shameful. Man. Let me tell you who Paul McGann is. Shameful. So it, yeah, that was, what a highlight. And do you remember when you found out that they were going to do the docudrama as well? Oh yeah, the, because when yeah, the photos yeah, yeah. from that first started coming out and like the shots of the Daleks going across Westminster Bridge, yeah. I thought this is going to be the best week ever. Yeah, and it was. I, I mean, you know, when ignoring Doctor Who, the after party live. Remember that? Yeah. Oh my, Matt Smith sticking his visa up to One Direction. If you haven't seen it, find it on YouTube. That it's was amazing. Because like. then One Direction announced we're having One D Day. Just also happens to be on the twenty third of November, twenty thirteen. And every Doctor Who fan in the world got really angry, as if the people that would be excited for one D-Day yeah. would watch that over, you know? Like, yeah. anyway, but um, it's well worth seeking out if you can find it. It's, abso it's an absolute train wreck of television. It's interesting that the BBC have decided to bury that as, yeah, it's like it's the holiday special for Star Wars. It's yeah, like, George, yeah. <laughs> George Lucas is like, no, that's never going anywhere ever again. The You're BBC gonna have to like, wait yeah, until the collection the set comes out for that in 28 years time, and then yes. we can watch it in its full unedited glory. Um, but yeah, and, and, and then, you know, there, there were the, the kind of highbrow documentaries that were on like Radio 4 and stuff, talking yeah, about yeah, Doctor yeah. Who that week and all sorts. And who remembers the, the was it the proms or the, con the Doctor Who concert at yeah. the yeah. Albert Hall? And that song that Murray Gold wrote. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday, Doctor You. Oh. That's also disappeared, hasn't it? There's a very Everyone's distinct reason Everyone's forgotten about that. that, yeah. Gosh, that um, was cringy. But then, yeah, and, and then the 50th anniversary celebration event in London at the XL. Yeah. And know. when did you go? I went, the, I went on the day that nobody really wanted to go, which was the day before Tom Baker was there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was great, it was great. But it was funny, just speaking about it now, you know, Longley is always considered like the, the Doctor Who kind of, um, what's, that, what's that bigger? Woodstock. Woodstock, I yeah. said it earlier. It's kind of Doctor Who Woodstock. But the 50th anniversary event wasn't quite no. like that. It didn't pop off in the same way. No. Um, but I mean, the visual of Tom on stage with all the all other the do yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, doctors, you know, yeah. that was quite something. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was, you know, that was a cool event. I was, I was really annoyed because um, me and my brother, who's sat at the back, giving us a wave, um, we, uh, we went on the day that Tom was there. But if you didn't have a specific ticket, you couldn't meet Tom Baker. And we didn't have that ticket, so we were very annoyed. So we just sort of watched him signing from afar and thought, well, you ended up seeing a photo with him at another event. <laughs> I didn't see him that. later on, yeah, but at the time it would, it would have been nice on the day. Yeah, you know. I think I'm a bit raw about it because the only autograph I could afford, not to like put him down or anything, was Gabriel Wolf, Sutek. I mean, that's amazing. And I went up and I got an autograph from him. And he posed with, his, with an action figure of Sutek, and I turned around and somebody took the photo. And just over my shoulder, he said, kneel before the might of Sutek. <laughs> and a funny feeling went through me, and it was great. Um, not that, no, not that kind of thing. <laughs> um, so, and then, of course, the mad rush for everybody going to that event to get back yeah, in time. We, we literally got in through the front door, sat our bums down, switched the telly on. It was just about to start. Mm. I don't know how we did it, but we and managed. the anticipation of that happening. You and would have thought they'd have gone... We should probably scream this at this convention, yeah, seeing it, as it, everyone's here for that episode. Yeah, I, that makes sense. Bit of a weird oversight, but, but there we you know. go. Um, and so then the 50th anniversary actually happened. The day of the Doctor went out. Yeah. And should we go through it chronologically? Is that the best way of reviewing it? Should yeah, we go yeah, through yeah. it? So obviously we've got the you know the, the opening titles reminiscent of the Hartnell titles. That's a very nice touch. Yeah. I think that's great. They cut them off early though. They cut them off early, but I know you know most opening title sequences back then were like three minutes long. So yeah. it's, you know, it's, it, you know. Um, oh, you get the policeman. You, you get, get the policeman I and I am foreman. And a weird hybrid. I didn't realise the W was supposed to be a reference to Warris Hussein, but W Coburn, written as like one of the governors on the oh, really? thing. Apparently it's a, f it's a fusion of Warris and, and Anthony Coburn. Oh, okay. Coburn but That's there we go. interesting. Um, Clara riding her motorbike into the TARDIS. It's got to be probably one of the best sort of TARDIS shots. They did a lot of that really well in that season, didn't they? Well, I'd forgotten that this was in 3D. Oh, yeah. Can you yeah. remember? This was a 3D thing. Did anyone see it in 3D? Yeah, oh, okay. was it Everybody good? saw it in the cinema. Did it yeah. work? 
Yeah. See, uh, I could not watch Doctor Who in a cinema full of Doctor Who fans. I'd be like, like you see that clip of the guy um, when Star Wars starts, and everyone's cheering, and goes, "Shut up, you morons!" Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be that. Um, but that's that that run of the show does TARDIS entry and exit shots really well. There's yeah, that one in the Bells of St John. That's a lovely shot on the uh, they... on the plane. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, um, and Clara can ride a bike. Doesn't do it before, never does it afterwards. But oh no, hang on! So there's the, t- in the Bells of St John. I'm lying. Or is or is Matt riding it in that one? He's mm. riding it in that one. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, there we go. Um, a bit of a TV movie type thing, isn't it? The motor. What the, the motorbike, motorbike going into the tunnel? When Doctor yeah. Who gets an extended runtime, they like to have motorbikes in it for some reason. Yeah. Apparently. Um, Why didn't he park closer? Why didn't he park <laughs> in the junkyard round the corner? Let the TARDIS knows. Because it's Stephen Moffat. And yeah. I tell you one thing that Stephen likes to do, if you think it's going to go one way, he changes his mind at the last minute and subverts your expectations. He's, it, well, he's, he's very that. clever. Yeah. He does that a lot. Uh, TARDIS is picked up by unit and flown to London. Ah, but did, before we, before we oh, go, go, go that, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. I'm did excited. you notice the quote, the Marcus Aurelius quote? Oh, right. yeah. Waste no more time arguing what a good man should be, be one. And I thought that's quite interesting because obviously the good man thing would come into Doctor Who Mm. majorly with um, Peter Capaldi. So majorly we were beaten over the head with it. We were beaten over the head with it. And of course it's a nice uh, foreshadowing for what this story is about. Like the Doctor, Mm. you know, can I be a good man if I'm going to blow up all of my people? And it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because they just change everything anyway. Yeah. So we never really get an answer to that question. So. You can hear Russell T Davies screaming in anguish in the background. <laughs> everything that he'd done has just been unwritten. I remember he did do an interview. I can't remember. Did he do it with Graham Norton or something? And somebody asked him, what did you think of that? And there was a very long pause before he gave his yeah. answer. He was thinking about how not to <laughs> say what he wanted to say, maybe. But yeah, I mean... <sighs> What do you think of the undoing of the time war? Because, I mean, it, I kind of feel like eventually it had to happen. We had to get Gallifrey back in the end. We had to have the time wars back in some fashion. Yeah. Um, and that whole thing about setting up a new mission for the Doctor after this story. Oh, what well, lasts all of about five seconds? The lasts, yeah, five seconds. Yeah, that was disappointing. Because yeah. it didn't really feel like we were going to be, all oh, right, for the 12th Doctor, maybe this will be his thing, that he's going to go off and spend his time trying to find Gallifrey. But, but do you remember that scene where he does? Uh, but Missy lied to him. Oh yeah, and, and he punches he the beats console. the shit out of the console. That is a, that's a really good scene. Uh, yeah, yeah. I j- I've blocked a lot of that series out of my memory. This was the thing, re-watching this, I was like, my God, I forgot all this stuff happened. Yeah. Like the Doctor mentions Trenzalor, and I was like, oh, that was a thing? Yeah. Trenzalor, what the, was that at about? The end, at the end, they have that confrontation, the conversation between 10 and 11. And yeah. Says, you know, I, you, I know where we're heading, sort of thing, and talks yeah. about Trenzalore. And yeah, like that's, that's turned out to be a, a very affecting place in the Doctor's life, because they've never mentioned it since. No. Um, it's really we- it's weird how different it is as well. Like, Name of the Doctor is this like, massive battleground where you know, it's like a wasteland, and then, oh, Christmas is Christmas Town, and it's all nice and pleasant, and there's wooden Cybermen and stuff. And it's like, what? what? I don't think he really knew what he was doing at this point, Stephen. No. Did he ever? Did he ever? Well, maybe yeah. for one year he did. Um, TARDIS is picked up by unit, yeah. flown by helicopter to London. Yeah. Murray Gold gets to dip into the Series 1 soundtrack and use some stuff from that from CD, unit, yeah. which is great. Yeah. Apparently there's loads of unused tracks on the soundtrack, on yeah. the soundtrack yeah. which is bizarre to me. I mean, do they use it as a nostalgia pop, having the old tracks? But it's like in Spectre, I don't know if anybody noticed in Spectre, they reuse a lot of the music from Skyfall in it, like literally yes. wholesale ripped off the CD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, was, was Murray starting to kind of, was he running know, out of time I, I, on I, it? Or? I noticed in the notes for the Series 1 soundtrack, Murray's been like, oh, this is what I wrote for the regeneration. But they didn't go with that, they used this piece of music instead. Right. And I was like, oh, I wonder why. Mm. That song for four thing pops up again for the regeneration of Matt in the time of the Doctor as well. So there's other bits and bobs that get reused and recycled all over the place. Filming it in London does make it feel like a big deal. Because it's not a, a, you know, housing thing in Cardiff. It does make it feel like this is a big deal. Mm. And the way it's shot and all all the... Photos that were coming out from that when Matt Smith was hanging from the bottom of the TARDIS. Yeah. What's he hanging on to? What's on the bottom of the TARDIS that he's got hold of? 
<laughs> it's dimensionally transcendental. So well, it, just, it spawned handlebars. Are you are you the same person that got angry at Jody doing all that work? Oh no, I like that. I like that. I like that stuff. I thought that was good. Kate Stewart and Osgood, discuss. I mean, Kate Stewart's fine. Yeah, yeah. She's no brigadier, but I mean that's the thing, isn't it? She's never going to be the brig. No. Um, and Osgood's all right. I don't I know think if I she's so annoying. I'm sorry. It's the whole, oh, it's, okay. it's the whiz kid thing. Okay, I was, being po- I was being polite. No, no. she is irritating, but yeah. you know. It's the, it's the whiz kid thing in Greatest Show where like, let's let's get the fans in. Let's say, but she's treated like an idiot the whole time. Yeah. I just think, is that what Stephen thinks of us? You know? Yeah. I, mean, I, just, I just don't like that whole thing of like, in universe, you've got someone who's like, I'm gonna cosplay as, you know, you wouldn't do that in real life, would you? You wouldn't like, I wouldn't go to work cos... No, no, where where are we? You wouldn't, you, wouldn't co- you wouldn't cosplay as your boss at work. I wouldn't go to work and go, oh, Lewis, you've, done, you've grown your hair and you've put it in a ponytail and now you're wearing all this Japanese stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. That would, no, look, that, you'd st- that would suit you, though, oddly. I oh, think. really? Okay. Um, yeah. I'd get the sack. The, the only... Th- the, I feel like the only thing that really lets this story down structurally as like a whole is that as soon as we go into the um, museum, Yeah. we see Elizabeth's credentials. Yeah. Whoa, that's our story. Mm. How cool is that? Oh no, we're gonna spend 40 minutes on a Zygon story. Yeah. And do we really think there's, I mean, I know it's the, fir- the first time they came back in the new series, but are the Zygons really 50th anniversary villain fodder? Are they, are they at that level? I because guess there's a much more interesting story going on with Gallifrey that really only is like 15% of the episode itself, yeah. really. I just feel like it's a bit of a missed opportunity. Do you think that was the draw to get David Tennant? Well, I think no, actually David Tennant had come back for anything to do with Doctor Who. But yeah. I guess it was a nice draw for him because he's always said that the Zygons are his favourite monster. Mm. What do you think of the Zygons in this story? I don't, I mean... I mean, they could have been anyone. They didn't need to be in no, it. No, I mean... They're nowhere near as good as in Terror of the Zygons. And subsequently, they're not very good in... Um, <laughs> do you know why that, that is? Two-parter. Mm. It's because Chris Chibnall didn't write them and bring him back. Yeah, see, Chris, Chris Chibnall, Chibnall does classic villains very well. If there's anything we can take away from yeah. his tenure, is he does classic villains really well. Um, I, I think they're actually shot quite well in that sequence when they pull off the veils. How long have they been stood under those bloody cloths? I know. <laughs> I know. But I, I, I think it's quite good. I mean, there's one thing I, I have to say about this episode that really derailed it for me. But in this sequence, it works quite well. The, qu- the quick cutting to the Zygons mm. so that you don't see one in full and it's a yeah. bloke in a rubber suit. Yeah. You know, I, I think they, they do that really, really well. But the transformation as well from Kate into yeah, um, that's the really, Zygon, that's really well done. The, they, it's very horrific. They've given them something to do, which is a bit alien, which is yeah. the... The spit, the, the gun yeah, yeah, yeah. that comes out, which is, you know, it's cool. It makes them look a bit more. You can see the, C- the CGI budget is higher for this story. Yeah, I mean, I because suppose. you're getting that, and you're getting stuff like all of the Dalek ships and all the stuff on Gallifrey, which looks amazing. Yeah, you, know, you can't yeah. take that away from the story. No, 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 no. All of the Gallifrey stuff looks incredible. Absolutely. Um, the editing in this, though, there's some bizarre editing. The only thing I can compare it to is that Reign of Terror recon that came out. <laughs> that cutting, where it's just like if someone turns their head and you get three cuts in about half a second. It it's, is, yeah, it's very frantic. disorientating. I, and I can't keep a grip on what's going on. It's very yeah. stylistic. I tell you what, it's very much like it's very Sherlock, because yes. I think the guy who directed it, Nick Huron, I think yes, he directed yeah, yeah, yeah. it, did a lot of Sherlock, and it's got that, you know really stylized, yeah. you can see the edit. Yeah, thing, it's like stuff know? like, oh, you know, oh, they smashed their way through the through the pictures. And then we see like the glass smashing, like yeah. again and again. It's like, okay, yeah, we, we get yeah. it. They smashed through the pictures. What I thought was hilarious about that bit is is Kate, uh, Matt said, look, look at the shatter pattern on the floor. And he picks it up and stares at it and deduces from staring at this one pane of glass that he was smashed from the other yeah, side. Yeah. It's on the floor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at the floor, bro. You don't need to look, pick up this pane of glass. I thought it was hilarious. Um, what, I do you, like, what do you think about the 3D picture things? It's a great conceit. It's really clever. And, and it doesn't actually feel that gimmick. You know, you see a 3D movie, it always feels like they've just crowbarred these 3D effects in. There's a couple of shots in this that I kind of feel like they look a bit, they linger on it too long. Yeah. That you don't get the same experience watching it in 2D as you would have in 3D. And there's one bit where they're, they're in the forest and the camera's kind of crabbing around a tree and there's lots of twigs and branches in your face. You think yeah. that would look great in 3D, but on my tiny television in the corner of the room, it's kind of a pointless mm. ling- lingering shot. Um, 
But I think the 3D thing works for the paintings, that whole, it's three-dimensional, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's Time Lord technology, of course it, it's a boring painting, but yeah. of course you can step into it, it's bigger on the inside. What, one thing that I realised as, as I was watching it, um, you have that scene, I know I'm skipping way, way ahead, but while we're on the subject of 3D paintings, uh, the doctors are on Gallifrey, and they use their sonic screwdrivers on a Dalek, doing God knows what, I don't know how that makes any sense, and they smash the Dalek through the painting. How does that work? Because there's not like a frame floating somewhere on Gallifrey and they're like, oh, there, yeah, that's going into the, the gallery somewhere. Where do they go? <laughs> One thing I, d I do think is really funny about that is, you know... Clara's hand. Clara's the, hand that became a huge conspiracy on, on, online. On Gallifrey base, if you remember, there was, a, there was a shot of Clara coming out of the painting and her hand's coming around the corner of the frame, kind of holding onto it. And, and it's, it's, it is a weird looking it's shot. A, it's a weird shot because they were like, oh, we can 3 d yeah. this and it will be like... Clara's hands right in your face. But everybody reason. thought it was somebody else's hands. Oh yeah, it was Missy, wasn't it? For it a was long time. Missy. It was all Missy's it was crept out of the picture. Oh, well, she, did, she didn't even exist at that point. Well, I guess somewhere in the back of Stephen's mind. Well, it's got to be the answer is either the Rani or Omega. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's coming back. Now, this is always funny the case. you should mention Omega because there's a, ref there's a couple of references. There's a few Omega. references to Omega uh, in this story. But at the time, uh, I shan't say who, but I was in contact with a BBC licensee uh, who very swiftly told me, he's like, oh yeah, so Billy Piper's coming back, but she's not playing Rose Tyler, she's playing The Moment, which we'll get to in a moment. Mm. In, in a moment. Ooh. Uh, but that, they were like, yeah, and John Hurt, he's not really a doctor. I was like, oh, isn't he? He said, no, 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 he's Omega. It's all a big ploy. At the end, it's revealed that he's Omega all along. And I thought, that is complete nonsense. Well, yeah, it's, I mean, But that it was what like they were told. Really? That's what they were told. That was because they were trying to keep it all secret. Interesting. Somehow the, the actual answer is a lot less interesting than him actually being Omega. How would that even work, though? I don't what know. What would he do? I don't know. And also, this double, st another double standard. Stephen doesn't get any grief out of adding the other doctor. Well, he's called the other doctor for a, for a so, lot of the marketing, isn't he? Yeah, that and was the because they doctor. changed it at the last minute, right. from what I'm told right. by people. So he gets the war doctor, the, you know, the other doctor, fine, undoing the time war, free pass. But, uh, dare I mention the time there's children in a room full of Doctor Who fans. But Stephen doesn't get any guff for adding the war doctor? Uh, yeah, Come but that's, on. that's because that's like in between doctors. If it's before William Hartnell, then, then we have problems. Do we though? Do well, we really? Well, oh come, come on! It's a. Oh, I won't. I, I'm not, get, keep your pitchforks down. Seriously, it's fine. <laughs> um, if you haven't seen the name of the Doctor though, talking about John Hurt. Yeah, you'd be like his appearance in this, this is like what? And and you know, it's the biggest Doctor Who episode of all time. Yeah. You know, arguably speaking, in terms of the profile the show had in the week that yeah. it, was, it was being broadcast. And there's no, I mean, you, you kind of get an introduction to the War Doctor, but when you start getting flashes of him, for any audience member that stopped watching around Series 6, which was most of my friends yeah. at school who were Doctor Who fans, who is this, who is this bloke? I think Why I, should I care I about I think I was asked by people, who, who's the War Doctor? I didn't know John Hurt was Doctor Who, and I was like, yeah, so there's this new thing that they've just introduced, and I think people just sort of glazed over when I tried to explain it to them. But, yeah, um, yeah. What do we think of John Hurt? What, 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 let's, what do we think of the War Doctor as an idea, I think as it, a concept? I think it works in retrospect because you can't imagine Paul McGann's Doctor being the one that presses the button. But I think that's what would have made it so amazing. But it's such a, it's whole, have this, it's such a sad end to his tenure if that's what he but had then to that do before he died. Yeah, that would, oh, that would have been great. That's, do you that's like drama. that tragedy? I love, I, you know, well, I mean, I did a whole nerdy, bloody fan fiction about it on True. YouTube. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that would have been amazing. I like the idea that you've got this doctor who is like the nicest doctor, mm. this fresh faced romantic doctor who just loves the universe and mm. loves exploring. And then he has to go through the most horrific thing and it destroys him. And then you've got Christopher Eccleston who's got to try Deal and pick the up baggage. the pieces. Yeah. And I suppose, I suppose Eccleston's baggage at the start of series one doesn't really diminish by the fact that we know he wasn't responsible no. for it. Because yeah, he, yeah. as far as he's aware, he did do it. He did do it. Yeah. And that, so it does, it does work. It doesn't really sort of demolish anything we know about that period in the show. John Hurt, John Hurt himself. Yeah. He's fine. He's fantastic. He's, I mean, he's like, he's, I love the fact that he was excited to be a Doctor Who. Yeah. And he kept asking people, does this mean I'm really a Doctor Who? A Doctor Who. Yeah. And everyone went, yes, it does, John. Um, I, I, 
I don't feel like they get the, mo the, the most out of him. No. I, I do feel like, and I feel the same with, with Jodie's acting in, in the current run of the series, they kind of cut around her and him too much. Yeah. I want, you know, John Hurt is an actor that you want, you want to watch him perform. Yeah. And the cutting away from him occasionally in the scene in the forest is like, I want to see him actually interact in a big, proper, long shot yeah. with these doctors because they're all together. Um, but I think he's great. I think he's great. And I, you know, I totally buy the war doctor. I buy the character. I buy his performance. See, this is my issue with the war doctor is they make such a big song and dance about like, oh, you know, I, I, I hid him away and I, I don't like to think about all the awful stuff I did. And then you meet him in the story and he's just like, he's just like a normal Doctor Who. So he's just a quite affable you know, he's not like, bloke. He's yeah. not like horrible or anything. No, you know, no, you wouldn't no, no. imagine him doing anything, you know, Craigie, Tom Baker probably did worse stuff in mm. his stories than you can imagine. I think there's a, there's a disparity in the badass, Mohican old <laughs> Man, dude, yeah. you know, in, in the leather and you know, yeah. he's shooting stuff into walls, that no more thing. I know it doesn't make any sense, but it looks cool. Yeah. And then this quite charming, affable, older yeah. gent. It doesn't quite It doesn't work. gel. I, I don't know if it's his look. I don't think it's the Mohican, because I think that kind of, the Mohawk kind of, it's a nice look. It looks cool, yeah. but I just, there's just something about him that isn't gelling. There's two parts of his character. Yeah. Um, but John Hurt is obviously an example, you know, mm. exceptional actor, and he's really, quite strong in this. I, I think, think I think this is one of those things where this is good we have big finish because I mean I don't know if anyone has listened to the John Hurt big finish stuff and I think they're really good stories. Uh, you know, it's very much the same with John Hurt revisiting that character. But I think with the newer stuff with Jonathan Carley, I think maybe mm. here this is where they can explore more of that darker side of that doctor. Mm. Um, at least I hope so. As a as a younger man. As a younger more man, yeah. Sort of yeah. yeah, cool. And I'm then it would that. make more sense then while he's at the end of his life that he's like, actually, you know what? I've really had enough of all this. Yeah. Okay. I can see that as a, yeah. as a progression of character. Um, Billy Piper. Nice to see her. Yeah. She's from Swindon. Can't win them all. Um, <laughs> she. Her, what do you think about her not playing Rose? I think it's absolutely the right thing to do. Yeah, totally. You couldn't have Rose Tyler back. Do you reckon she was contracted before Chris said no? And she may have played Rose. I mean, mm. let's not get into their relationship. But there, you think there may have been an idea of pairing her with... Would you rather have seen her with Chris or her with David? Just as like a straw poll. Chris. Chris. Yeah, it's yeah. weird that, isn't it? It kind of feels that it would be lovely to kind of... It's the OG team. Yes, yeah, the OG team, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, she's great in it. You know, she, she... I would have liked maybe a bit more of a... She's, like, inches away from the Tenth Doctor kind mm. of thing. And there's that kind of... She knows. The moment knows yeah, yeah. all about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but, you know, she's, she's great for just popping up and sort of adding a little bit of context and things like that. And few funny lines, you know, she's absolutely fine in it. It's interesting really that it was almost expected that she sort of had to come back. Mm. But when you think about it, really, in the grand scheme of things, in the like the tapestry that is Doctor Who, you, you know, there's, I think, Yaz has been in more Doctor Who stories than yeah. Rose. Yeah, is she going to be in the 75th anniversary? <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody want her in the, no, I'm joking. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, like, I like Rose in the story. But again, it does feed into that thing for me that this is a celebration of oh. the last eight years of yeah. Doctor Who. And you get the little flitterings of references. Yeah. And of course, the all 13 bit. At yeah. The end, but, you know, I think the, for, for Doctor Who, for classic, you know, fans and new fans, but for the ones that really wanted to get their dose of classic series. Mm. And what you would have expected from an anniversary special, the 50th anniversary special, only really happens in the last five minutes. Yeah. With the uh, all 13, and then of course the cura cur curator popping up at the end. Yeah. Um, but the rest of it is sort of like, but, but then really, we're that far enough away from Rose and the broadcast of Rose, that it does make sense to have an anniversary to celebrate that stuff. It feels old enough that yeah. there can be a nostalgia. Oh yeah, it. true, true. You but know, like, but you do feel, I've, I still feel hard done by that we didn't get Peter, Colin, Sylve and Paul in some capacity. Because mm. I've always said, you know, even if you didn't bring them back as the doctors and dress them up and all this, that and the other, mm. it would have been nice to have done kind of like a Zagreus 
big finishy type thing, and have them as ancillary characters where, you know, I don't know, they go into the, the National Portrait Gallery and, oh, got to scan your pass, please, sir. It's Sylvester McCoy, and he bumbles around with something. And, sure. you know, Matt Smith sees him and he's like, oh, you look familiar. And Sil's like, oh, no, I don't, I don't know you. And I, I think I said before, it'd be nice, like, at the end with Tom, if they'd have just sort of all come together and been like, oh, well, at least, at least we led him in the right direction mm. and put, put him in the right path. Mm. But, but they do kind of do that with Tom. They do it with and Tom. I, and as, as one, you know, I'm not going to criticise the curator scene because it's exceptional. But there's one line of dialogue in there that every time I hear it, I, I do, I hate it. It's the, um, you might find yourself revisiting some old uh, faces, but just the favourites, eh? This, you know, like, what? How dare you? How dare you? Like, in, in the mind's eye, I know this is generally what people think of the classic series of Doctor Who. This is, the, this, is, this is what they're given. Doctor Who started in 1963. It was black and white for a bit. Then Tom Baker was the Doctor, and then it was cancelled in the 80s. Yeah. That, is, that, is what, that is what the general public know about Doctor Who. So of course you're going to bring Tom Baker back. Yeah. But to put that line in, as if it's sort of like set in stone, like, you know, he is the Doctor though, isn't he? Everybody else. I mean, let, let's just, let's, to put it in perspective, in my notes, I put, Tom, best bit, Doctor Who makes an appearance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's sad, but it's true, isn't it? No, I, I, I like the fact that they didn't put him in the scarf. I like the fact yeah. that he's a different character. And again, I mean, I don't know, you've not heard any of Stranded. Anyone listen to Stranded, Big oh, Finish? Oh, no, I've heard the first box there, a couple of... I love what they're doing with the curator in that. Mm. Because it's just like Tom Baker's turned up in an episode of Doctor Who. Yeah. That's Tom Baker. That's Tom but Baker. he's also kind of the Doctor. He's brilliant. Yeah, I, I, you know, he's, he's Tom Baker. You know, you're going to get your money's worth out of him, um, no matter how expensive it is. Um, <laughs> you know, for a 76 minute story, I'd have just been happy with Tom Baker just sat in an armchair talking nonsense for 76 well, yeah, minutes. But he's been listening to Who on Earth is Tom Baker on the bus. To a back and a very bad work. idea because I'm in hysterics on the bus all the time and I'm just saying like, oh God, people are going to think, oh, is it, he's the bus loony and I'm, like, I'm not. <laughs> you always, always one. There's always one maybe and it's me. I've become the loony. Is Tom Baker. Maybe, yeah. maybe that's that. Um, hey, David Tennant's in this. Yeah. He's, I, I, I am mean, not he's a slick. massive fan of the Tenth Doctor, but is there... Has there ever been a doctor that has been away from the programme for a, a decent length of time and just is like, it's him, yeah. again. He slips He's back into that role so quickly. Shame about the fringe. Shame about the fringe. Shame about the line where, where they go, oh, you're super skinny. And I'm like, Matt, mate, you're much skinnier than David Tennant. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Didn't anyone notice? Their scene, their first scene together. Yeah. You want the, you know, the doctors never get on. No. But they have a properly good bicker. Yeah. And it's really well written. Yeah. And, you know, the kind of the, the phallic reference of the Sonic. Yeah. I'm not always for that kind of stuff. But it's really good, you know, yeah. in that scene. Um, you know, and, and yeah, they're, they're back and forth. The doctors never get on with each other. So to see those two having a pop, and they have legitimate pops at each other, yeah. it's really funny. Um, then John Hurt comes along, says, don't point them, they're water pistols. And within the next 15 minutes, they're repelling a Dalek with yeah. them. Mm. Yeah. 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 That was not lost on me. <laughs> um, I, it, it has the same quality as the, as the Five Doctors. Is the kind of point I, I kind of notice some similarities. Where you know when you watch the Five Doctors, it's kind of like oh, I'm just waiting for that bit. Mm. I'm waiting for the chess bit. I'm waiting for the the Cybermen to get massacred. They're waiting for the Cybermen to get massacred because no. they're never treated well in Doctor Who. Um, you're waiting for certain moments. Yes. You've had this place redecorated. I don't like it. Yeah. You're waiting for all those bits. And I think this story on rewatches does have that same quality. Yeah. You're waiting for the bit where they meet up for the first time. Yeah. You're waiting for the stuff on Gallifrey that's really, really well shot. You're waiting for the cur cur curator bit. My God, I'm having trouble with that word tonight. Um, it's that non-alcoholic. It's that non-alcoholic <laughs> beer that's getting to my head, yeah. Um, and so it, on rewatches, as that, as a, as a dose of Doctor Who, as the things you really want to see, it does work really, really well. I think, as, I think it's... A fine story. Mm. I think it's it's good. It mm. is good. It's good fun. But I don't know if it necessarily works as a an anniversary special for fifty years. Mm. I think it works as an anniversary special. Maybe mm. just not for fifty years. Yeah, I think I think so. I, and <coughs> that last sequence where we have all the doctors lined up. It's a beautiful visual. On paper. On paper. 
Not in practice. <laughs> not in practice. I, I mean, besides the fact, and you know, Johnny will have something to say about it, I'm sure they get Sylv's costume completely wrong yeah. uh, in it. Uh, he's not got a scarf. I believe his pullover might even be tucked in. Yeah. Sacrilege. Yeah. Um, uh, John's costume is all a bit John's all over well. the place. John looks like he's just been driven through a bush backwards, <laughs> and they've gone here. Here you go. It's his look from Spearhead. That's fine. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and you know and then, like, that's the, the, that's the, that's the money shot though, isn't it? Yeah, that's the, it's awful that that's the lingering shot. Of the whole thing is look at these weirdly cut out faces stuck on these oddly shaped actors' faces. It looks bodies, like the, and they don't look like the actual actors. Is it, they had a rough time with getting faces onto bodies. That the cover for the for the what was that big finish story from that year? Light at the end. Oh yeah, when they, where they stood the on bodies. that thing and they put the faces on the CGI bodies. Oh. It, it just doesn't work. They no. would have been better off if they'd have just shot it from the back because that looks fine. When you see them all from the back and you're like, oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, and, that's, that's Christopher that's, Eccleston that's, and that's Sylvester McCoy. I've got the inference. Yeah, I don't need to see their faces. And then and as like, soon and then, and then because it's like an odd number of doctors, yeah, William, William his own in the back. is just like on, in the background. Yeah, like on his own. Which let's draw the short straw. Which one of you is going to go at the back? Yeah. And Bill has to. Oh well, never mind. Um, yeah, the fiftieth anniversary special. What, what, what more have you got to say on it? Because I, I know you, you had a few things that you wanted to sort I mean, of get into. <laughs> oh, one thing we haven't mentioned. Mm. Peter Capaldi makes his oh, first appearance yeah. as Doctor Who. Yeah. That was exciting. That was excellent. Yeah. Really cool. Um, I, I believe he's wearing Matt's costume. No, I think he's just wearing his normal, just his own clothes, I which just happens to be a burgundy velvet jacket, which uh, is very similar to Doctor the... Doctor Who wiki is not actually a reliable place to go then, apparently. Yeah, I'm he sure he's just wearing... It, it might even be like a jacket that he wore in a publicity picture. Right. It was announced or something. Right. I think they literally like shot it on the same day, didn't mm. they? They're just like, oh, come in here and in here. glare at the camera. Glare at the camera. He's very good at that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a brilliant sequence mm. with all those Doctors coming back. But again, it's that thing where you think that, of course, the way that they were going to get the old Doctors in is just archive footage. Yeah. And it does feel a bit like, well, it's, it's difficult to critique it because obviously, you know, the, the, the actors that are, are not around anymore, mm. you know, Big Finish have found a workaround, but that's fine because it's audio. Yeah. Um, and, but, but, you know, with, with Chris's clip, it just reminds you he's not there. And I, I, yeah. that, that to me is, is a disappointment that he's not in it. Like having him on the poster, and it's weird. It, it's, amazing. It's weird that McGann's not in it at all when they've just invested all this money in a new costume mm. and got him in to do stuff. You're like, oh, oh, you could have at least put a scene in with him. Also, you see the seventh Doctor in uh, the console room. I think it's in Battlefield. It's Battlefield, and then you see him in the console room from the, the TV, TV movie. movie. Yeah, like what's going on next there? to each other? Yeah. Timey wimey. It's timey wimey. It's not laziness. Oh, okay. It's timey wimey. <laughs> Um, seeing all the TARDISes together is always a blast. And, and the stuff in the barn, actually, with the moment yeah. um, and the TARDISes being next to each other, that's, that's, that's really lovely. Um, I did have a, an inter interesting tidbit. I, I don't know if this is on uh, a website anywhere. Car uh, so Jenna Coleman was the only actor that was actually contracted when they started production yeah. on Day of the Doctor. And Stephen Moffat had to come up with a desperate attempt to, j j you know, what can we do? If we just have Jenna Coleman, what can we do? So apparently he wrote a treatment for a story called The No Doctors. Right. I'd really like to see that. See, I quite like that idea. And I was thinking about this earlier. Would it have been quite cool to have seen, like, I don't know how you'd work it into the story, but have, like, Jenna Coleman going through instances of Doctor Who history where they recreated stuff? But like they blew that low when they did Name of the Doctor, didn't they? Because she does it. She does oh, it she does it in that, doesn't she? Oh, okay. And well, also, we get Clara who in series eight anyway, when her face appears in the title yeah. sequence. Yeah. What was that about? That was. Do weird. you remember that Clara's face in the title sequence in the series eight episode? Like everyone was going to go, oh my god, she's Doctor Who. Because she says that, doesn't she? She says, I'm the Doctor. What? What was Stephen smoking, snorting, <laughs> injecting? <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy. Um, and of course, we have that massive bombshell that she's the reason why the Doctor takes the TARDIS that he takes. This is becoming less a review of the 50th anniversary and more all of our anger about the Stephen Moffat era. Yeah, the peripheral <laughs> stuff that's like, mm. Well, let's get into it then. Uh, what do we think about Clara being the reason the Doctor becomes the Doctor? Oh, I hate Well, that. actually, no, it, not anymore because the timeless children. Oh, yeah. So, you know. That's been retconned. That's been retconned. Well, yeah. The Doctor's no, she... not responsible for anything in, in Moffat's universe. I no. Feel. The Doctor's always being led somewhere by somebody. 
or the, the, the other person with him is always slightly more important than him. Like the, the hybrid thing. Yeah. The hybrid isn't just the doctor, it's the doctor and Clara. Mm. Because, you know, that's interesting. Yeah, I still don't get that. Does I, anyone actually understand what the hybrid was? No. 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 Forgotten yeah. about the hybrid. Okay, let's go through every Stephen Moffat story <laughs> chain that didn't actually get resolved. Trends are all back. Oh, hang on, okay, let's start from the beginning. Um, the Pandorica. Hey. Yeah. Pandorica. That gets resolved. That's fine. It's a mystery, it's a literal mystery box. The crack. The crack. I mean, that's a bit of a weird one. I'm still not 100% sure on what that was all about. So. Oh, come on then. Cliff Notes version. <laughs> <laughs> There's a crack in time. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> There's a crack in time. I don't really know. But basically, <laughs> what, what ends up being the case is that Gallifrey's behind it, right? Yeah, that's random. Oh. That, because that was always the plan. Yeah. That was always the plan. Gallifrey was always going to be behind that, you know, all the stuff with... And it brings yeah, why do we see the eyeball prison or whatever the frigate is in 11th hour and then suddenly it's Gallifrey in later on? Maybe it's a really tiny crack and there was a really big person and their eye was right up against it. <laughs> <laughs> Chancellor Flavia just like peeking <laughs> through. All right, what's going on in here? Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, so the crack, meh. Uh, the TARDIS exploding. Oh, yeah, what was that? Oh, yeah, that was... Series five, wasn't it? Um, who is? Who's the I, voice in the TARDIS in? Oh yeah, the Big Bang. Silence will fall. Silence will fall. Who's that? Um, who is the? Who? What are the eye patches about? Yeah, I can't remember. I don't know anything about series Amy's six. Amy's baby. I, all I remember, my lasting memory of series six as a visual is Amy's baby exploding. <laughs> <laughs> that is my yeah. lasting memory of that series. I can't. I've watched the finale of that maybe two or three times. And I cannot remember what happens in that finale. Is it A Good Man Goes to War? Is that the finale? No, that was like the midway <sighs> finale. So oh, well, they split the series, didn't they? They split the series for that one. What's the finale for that series? Wedding of River Song. Wedding of River Song. An episode I even, I know even less about than that. I remember there's, there's, a, there's a pyramid and a train goes into it because it's really quirky and weird and stuff. Yeah, isn't Winston Churchill in a toga or something? Yeah. Oh, God. And, and the Eleventh Doctor's getting painted naked in part of it, or he's underneath someone's skirt. He's making a lot, the 11th Doctor. Yeah, what's he's that very, He's very, he, for somebody who, when Amy kisses him in that awful scene that absolutely should not have been in that story, when Amy kisses him, and he's all like, oh no, weird, I don't like this. Oh, you're gonna get married. How many years later, Clara is an enigma wrapped in a very, very tight skirt. What's happened to him? Has he been traveling on his own that long? I think so. <laughs> he's had a, he's had long nights on the TARDIS, yeah. I tell you, on his own. Um, okay, next Stephen Moffat story fact. What was next? Am I a good man? Well, Is it was, tre was Trenzalore first. Oh, Trenzalore but first. Oh, that, well, yeah, but that's a, pl that's a place where he dies. It's not, a th it's not like yeah, a, a, a mystery. Yeah, what happened there? He didn't die though, did he? Well, obviously not, because you know, we've got Jodie Whittaker. Jodie Whittaker's the doctor now. So what was that all about? I just don't understand, I just don't understand any of this stuff. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, I it's like fine. the old days when it was just, this is a six part story or this is a four part story and that's the end of that one and we'll go on to the next one. <laughs> well, aren't we glad we've got Flux in that case? Because it's doing that. It's doing that. It's doing that, it's yeah, doing yeah. that. And, if, and Flux is the way that it should be done from now on, I think. Um, I, I, wish, I wish Tom Baker had been around in the Stephen Moffat years as like the incumbent doctor. I'd love to have seen what Tom would have made of all this stuff. The whippet well, shit would have been high. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Okay, so trends of law. Am I a good man? Does that get... Is he a good man by the end of it? Oh. I tell you what, he does become a rocking uncle on a tank. Yeah. That's the most important <laughs> part of it all. What happens to him, man? I don't know. Midlife crisis or did what? Did you see the article? He did an interview, like, this week, actually. Peter Capaldi. And he mentioned the whole miserable doctor thing. Mm. Or the more alien doctor, as he referred to it as. And he said, I, he said, I was inspired by Hartnell and the doctors of my youth, where they were a bit more cantankerous and, you know, you didn't always know what they were going to do. They weren't always necessarily friendly and happy-go-lucky or whatever. Mm. He said, I don't think... Doctor Who, as a brand, as it is now, he said, I don't think there is a place for that sort of a doctor anymore. He said, no. they favour the more impish, um, clown-like doctors. And he said, which is fine, he quickly added, as an addendum. <laughs> but uh, I thought, isn't that interesting? That he was mm. like, I wanted to do one thing. Even he kind of acknowledges, like, yeah. maybe it doesn't quite... It just doesn't work anymore. It doesn't quite work anymore. Because I guess it's just... Shame. Yeah. But then again, Christopher Eccleston, he had his, like, moments of, like, 
oh, come on, we'll be do a madcap thing and we'll have a run around from a pig and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. But, you know, for the most of the, most of the time, no he was like, left. yeah, you know, for the most part, he's quite angsty and, mm. you know, quite standoffish with mm. Rose about changing the course of history and yeah. humans are all stupid apes and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah but I don't know. I just... I, I know, I think I've said this in the video before, I spoke to a writer, somebody who wrote a script for Series 8, um, and they basically told me that they were sending the script in, and Stephen was sending it back going, no, make him nastier. Okay, make him a bit nastier. Sends it in. No, no, make him nastier. And to the point that the writer said, I don't even know who this character is I'm writing anymore. Really? And they were just like, you know, I don't know who this person is supposed to be, this yeah. doctor. Um, okay. The hybrid. Oh. Wait, is a Shilda the kind of one of the. In oh, the mix don't as talk well? to me about her, Shilda, <laughs> me, or whatever that was me. all about. Yeah. In two dreadful stories. Mm -hmm. Sorry if you like whatever episode she was in one with the Vikings, one with the. Oh, what, what the one with. Lion with, Man. With the Viking in the clouds. That's absolutely hilarious, that Girl shot. Died. Thank you very Girl much. Died. Thank there you very go. much. Um, yeah. I think I died watching that story. Yeah, many times. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, okay, and then series 10. There isn't really a through line in that. There's Missy, but then... Oh yeah, that was the thing, wasn't it? Like, she's who's locked a, in a room. Who, who's on the other side of the door? It's, it's Missy. Missy. Oh, you'll have to, oh no, you never know. It's, it's Missy. Missy. <laughs> it, it's Missy. Yeah. yeah, it's Missy. We knew. Um, series 11. I mean, it ends on the Battle of Ransquare of Colossus, so... You know, if, yeah, the, if no the thread was, we're gonna build up to the most disappointing finale ever, <laughs> then they succeeded. <laughs> Um, well, it's Teeth Man, isn't it? Teeth Man. Teeth, Teeth Tim Man. Shaw. T Tim Shaw. Tim Shaw. And then uh, 12 is The Timeless Children. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The room went very quiet when I mentioned it earlier. I thought I might actually be physically in danger if I mention <laughs> it anymore. So that I, Dalek's going to spin round and exterminate you. <laughs> Quite possibly. All right, bud. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we've spent more time not talking about the 50th anniversary special than well, actually let, talking let about let the me, 50th Let's drag it back to the 50th okay. by me saying, what really made the 50th anniversary? Out of all the things, what for you was the thing that was like, you know what, that was the real celebration of Doctor Who? Was it the day of the Doctor? Was it the night of the Doctor? Was it an adventure in space and time? Or was it the Five-ish Doctor's or, reboot? Or was it the... S oh, hey, 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 thank you. Or was it The Science of Doctor Who with Brian Cox? I fell asleep watching that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not ashamed to say. So, look, I don't think it's, it's I think it's obvious, I, I'm not, I don't really think of this as like a 50th anniversary celebration. Yeah. It's a big episode of Doctor Who that was shown on the 23rd of November, 2013. Yeah. Me, and there's nothing wrong with that. The week itself, I don't think could have gone any better. No. In terms of the content, in terms of the events, in terms of the, the, just the visibility of Doctor Who as a program, never been bigger, and, you know, certainly since it came back. Yeah. Hasn't been as high since. Although it did get bigger overnights. Uh, Jodie's first episode got bigger overnights than the 50th anniversary special. Wow. So stick that in your cap, N NMDs. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's the Five Ish Doctors reboot, actually, isn't it? Yeah, Five Ish Doctors reboot. I think it is. It is. The joy that leaks out of every pore of that thing. Yeah. It's a really grim visual, sorry. It's, <laughs> it's, um, it's, just, it's just wonderful. Yeah. It's so much fun. Yeah. And I haven't watched it since the day it went out. On, it, it was on the iPlayer. Uh, it was not. on Red Button or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until last night, and I watched it again. And I got a little tear in my eye watching it. It's just great, I think isn't it's it? so it's so lovely. And they've ob obviously the joke is they've not invited us. Yeah. Well, they haven't actually invited you, yeah. and that's re that really sucks. Yeah. So do whatever you want, you know. And the fact that everybody's game for it, everybody is is up for the, the yeah. laugh of it all, and you know, uh, you know, they're all taking the mick out of each other, and they're making taking the mick out of Tom because he's not there, which I think is brilliant. Mm. Um, I think Paul McGann's scene in it is probably one of the funniest. Yeah. Past the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, because they didn't know, did they, that no. he was actually invo involved in yeah. some way? Yeah. <laughs> <It was laughs> it stays very quiet, very yeah. sheepish. Um, and, and Stephen Moffat playing with his toys on his desk, which just become a universal meme for Stephen Moffat. Whenever yeah. I think of him, I just think of that. Because I think that's actually how he writes his plots. <laughs> um, please don't come back. Um, yeah, I think... It's, yeah, it's, it, it's that, isn't it? It's that, because it's that. daft. Yeah. It's silly. It's a bit low budget. 
you know, it's that you can see the seams a little bit. Yeah. But that's why we love it. Yeah. Because it's obviously made with a lot of love and passion. And, and it's all the heroes that we grew up with yeah. getting their time to shine. Yeah. You know, all right, so they're not all in costume and they're no. not playing the Doctor, but right. just seeing them going around the Doctor Who experience and like going up to the TARDIS mm. and, you know, making these little gags yeah. about all that stuff. It's great. I was going to bring up the Doctor Who experience, actually. If anybody went there, I'm sure a lot of you know that they actually shot all the tenant console room stuff in the experience. Yeah. So I always thought that was quite interesting. Yeah. The fact that the studio is right there, but you know, there's no point bringing it over, so shoot it in the... We'll just in go the across the road, yeah. It makes sense. Um, uh, the, yeah, the Five-ish Doctors reboot, it's, it's, one, it's wonderful, and I, I, I kind of wish we got another, another one. They were talking about it, weren't they? Weren't they yeah, just I just... Trying to I guess come they, up with an idea. Considering the fact that it was made, you know, just probably over texts, so yeah. say you're free next weekend to come and do something, like, you know... It, and Peter Davison wrote that, didn't he? Did he write that, Peter? Yeah. Yeah. Wrote and directed it, I think. Yeah. yeah. Who knew Peter was such a good writer? But he said, he said in interviews, if he ever did anything on Doctor Who he'd like to direct, I think in the, in the Earthshock, taking the sh putting the shock into a shot documentary. Yeah. But he mentions that he really wants to direct, mainly because I think he's so scarred by the experience he had being directed by bloody... Peter Grimwade. Peter Grimwade, <laughs> that he's just like, I want to do it, but people don't cry on film. <laughs> um, so, it, you know, wrapping up, talking about the 50th anniversary, what, uh, what, 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 what are our lasting impressions of it? it? Considering the fact that it sets the Doctor up for a mission that he doesn't actually end up going on, or is resolved off-screen somewhere. It's not actually resolved until Jodie appears on Gallifrey at the end of... No, um, Peter, Capaldi, Peter, Peter Capaldi goes to Gallifrey, doesn't he? Yeah, but that's in Hellbent. Oh, we forget about that. And that... Uh, <laughs> Hellbent. My, oh, my God. Hellbent. We have to review that at one point. I don't think it's that bad. Hellbent isn't that bad. <laughs> no. I think Here's my six-hour lecture on why Hellbent is crap. Right. So, <laughs> I mean, I'll, and I'll do a quick version of it. Clara dies and face the raven. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, all that's oh, terrible. No. All that's terrible. That's yeah. really sad. Heaven sent, literal grief personified. He's punching his way through glass. He spends millions of years trying to find out like, what happened. Clara's dead. I can't believe it. Next episode, she comes back. It's entirely yeah. pointless. I mean, when you put it like Heaven that, it's sent is true. entirely pointless. And, you know, it's not like I'm devastated that Face the Raven doesn't make any, you know, doesn't have any gravitas to it anymore. But Heaven sent, it was such a great story. Yeah. It just means nothing and I get that from every Stephen Moffat story that I watch pretty much it whenever somebody nothing. mentions a line of dialogue I go oh oh no that didn't end up getting resolved did it yeah. or that didn't make sense or he'll do a cringy line about Amy not wearing any knickers <laughs> <laughs> I was going to yeah, say, did that actually happen? And then I thought, no, they do make a remark about, oh, the floor's glass in the TARDIS. Don't look up, Rory. God almighty, what were they thinking? Stephen Moffat's desk must have been a little bit higher than everybody else's when he was writing. <laughs> um, yeah, one of those standing desks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes up and down. Well, I'm writing a Clara scene, but ooh, there we go. <laughs> but, thumbs up. Um, yeah, so 50th anniversary. Sorry, I was thinking about Stephen Moffat's. Erection. <laughs> erect, 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 erect penis, Matthew. Yeah, thanks very much. I was trying to avoid every way of saying Stephen Moffat's erect penis, but we've said it now twice. Um, 50th anniversary special. Yay or nay? It's, it's, good. Yeah. it's a good. It's a fun story. It's nice to see David Tennant come back. It's nice to see Matt Smith get to interact with him. It's nice to see the time war actually visualised for once. Mm. So it's, it's fine. Is mm. it a celebration of 50 years of Doctor Who? Yeah, mm. Not unless you're a proper old school fan who's going to pick up every little line where they're like, oh, yes, that's Patrick Tretton saying that in the three sure, doctors. Sure. And, you know. Yeah, I guess Otherwise, so. if you love the new series, that's, that's your anniversary. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Enjoy all the peripheral stuff like An Adventure of Space and Time, which is yeah. a wonderful celebration of yeah. 50 years of Doctor Who. Exactly, exactly. Or at least the beginnings of it. Exactly. Um, where do we put this in our rankings? Because we've, we've been trying to rank every story as we go through. I don't think it's quite uh, Twin Dilemma Underworld vibe. I don't think it's quite that low. Matt's no. lowest ra ranked story so far, by the way, is The Space Pirates. Yeah. Mine sorry, is, sorry mine Wendy. Is, if yeah, she's still around. If she's still around. Mine is uh, The Twin Dilemma. And I can say that because Colin isn't here today. Yeah. Um, so Tomorrow would have been a different story. Tomorrow would have been a different story. Um, I think he did have come in and punched you. <laughs> <laughs> rightly so. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's so difficult because everyone's got such a, an emotional attachment mm. to it as a story. I think... I think it just depends on where you came in as a fan. Like, mm. for us, it, you know, we were 
we were old school classic fans. You know, we watched it all. Mm. That was that was Doctor Who for us. And I guess you know, for younger people who came in in two thousand and five, Doctor Who for them is Tennant yeah, yeah, and course. Billy Piper and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I, I just I can't see I can't see past Chris not being in it. Yeah, that's. A, that's I think a that's moment. the real shame of the story is that Chris isn't in it, and you know. For all of that stuff, you know, I'm so glad he's, he obviously seems much happier now and that he's doing the stuff with Big Finish. That is wonderful. But that was our one opportunity to get Chris back on screen. Yeah. He's not, he's not going to do it again. Yeah. He said as much, I'm never going to do it on screen. No. And that was the one chance. And I just feel like when, you, when you're doing a story that actually does feel more like an eighth anniversary special, you're missing a third of that eight yeah. years. Yeah, because you would almost be forgiven thinking that Chris Ruxin even happened as a doctor yeah. watching that, you'd be like, oh yeah, so it started with David Tennant. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And you do see some fans on the internet turn around and say, I'll start with David Tennant. Mm. What? If you're gonna start, start with Rose. Start with an earthy child. No, don't start with an earthy child. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. If, if, if you tell anybody to start with an earthy child, you're making... A rod for your own back. You're making one less fan, <laughs> yes, I think. Yeah. It's, it's the fair way of putting it. Um, cool. Um, I think we've got like a little bit of time to, to kill before the hour's up. Right. So I'm gonna. If any anyone have anything they want to throw out there as like an opinion on the oh. day of the doctor or anything. Jonathan yeah, at the Jonathan back. Jonathan Toflo has something to say. Can you? Yeah. I make just make sure. That, oh yeah. The microphone's not on you, so it's okay. We can cut it out. <laughs> well, you know you said earlier on about um, during the 50th anniversary, different things. You know, what what made that year? Hey Matt, I know my th- eldest son was born. Few weeks before. <laughs> oh yeah. Apart <laughs> <laughs> from that, am I not? Am I mistaken? Was not Web of Fear and Web of Patrick Oh yes, and that was in my Bruh. notes. Yes. Oh my God, missing episodes came back. Yeah. That they were sitting on. They yeah. were sitting on them, weren't they? They had them maybe a year before, and they yeah. were like, "Now we'll." Sa- yeah. Twenty eleven. Oh wow! So it was early as that, and they thought, "We'll save it." Yeah. Yeah. That was probably the best thing they could have done. Oh, oh, holding it off. Holding it off, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I, th- yeah, I think you're right. I God, th- that, was, that was front page news. Yeah, it was on BBC Incredible. Breakfast. Incredible. Um, yeah, obviously that was, a, it was a huge, that was a huge deal. Yeah. The, be- the best thing to come out of it though is that everybody likes Enemy of the World. Yeah. <laughs> and is that everybody was like, huh? What's this been? Yeah. This is actually really good. Yeah, everyone's you know? been saying that this is a crap story. Yeah, it's but actually really, it's, it's brilliant. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, yeah, th- I mean, th- those stories coming back was, was, was wonderful. Yeah. Um, shame about episode three, but that's, you know, a whole other yeah. thing that we shan't get into. Oh, of well, Weather Fear, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, anything else? Yo, yeah. Uh, hello. Oh, here we go. Matt, oh, you, 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 you don't know, you direct traffic. You direct Chappie traffic. in the TARDIS hoodie. Good. Uh, I was just going to say, for me, I think the whole reason the 50th is number one is purely hype. Yeah. Yeah. The 50th anniversary, you know. That, and all the doctors come together. Mostly, it's like you say, for me, to my I've read that said these are big favourites for everyone. I think to admit that. I think that's purely the only reason this is number one. Because there's so many big stories out there. Yeah. I, I, I think that's right. I think, I think it being so well, close to that poll being put together. Well, what, what, should, what, what should be the number one Doctor Who story then? Curse of Pelagon. Five Doctors. Androzani. <laughs> five Doctors. Um, Either Genesis, Androzani, or Blink. Yeah, okay. that, they're up there. Either one of those three. Parting of the ways. Garlic. Yeah, I'm not hearing any Time Monster. <laughs> <laughs> no. Time Flight. Time, time Flight, flight. yes, oh yes. <laughs> Shariz, Shariz, Turum, Balor, Balor. We love Khalid. We love Khalid in this house. Um, Have you reviewed the actor part yet? Did I, miss I, wa- I, wa- I wa- yeah, yeah. We, we made a the, reference. We made a reference it, to the actor. It happened. The <laughs> 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 uh, Yo. Guys, I have to pick you up on when you said uh, that you had to rush home to watch up to and why didn't they show something there? They did sort of show something there because me and my friends watched it and a massive great big- Oh really? Yeah. What? At the, at, at the, at the- um, You got robbed. XL. Oh. Oh. Yeah. oh, there we are, Johnny. How did we not know this? It was a huge yeah. screen. Yeah. There was like, yeah. it was a big Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my apologies to BBC Studios. <laughs> <laughs> Gutted. I mean, again, I, I, I could not have sat there I mean, and watched I, it. I, I see so many pictures from that event Mm. Like since I was like, that was there. Yeah. I didn't see that, but it was just so crammed full of people. Yeah, it you was just couldn't ma- see for, for people dressed as Matt Smith or Tom Baker. It was yeah, it was it was a crazy crazy crush. Yeah. I remember when that happened. 
and Matt Smith's left on his own because I missed the line about there's an old man looking for you. Yeah. And Matt sat on his own and mum went, I think something's going to happen. And I went, what? And then, you know, I really think you might. Ah! Whoa! What? Yeah. It was, oh my God, yeah, that, was, that was crazy. That was intensely cool. Yeah. Billy, I'm, I'm with you on the, the thing with Chris, because you know, Chris is Doctor Who as far as I'm concerned, um, and so gutting that he wasn't in it. But I wonder, I, with the five Doctors, the five Doctors is clearly much loved, and obviously it's sad Tom Baker's in it, but that's not, I don't think it's often spoken about that much now in discourse about the five Doctors. Do you think we'll get to a point with the day of the Doctor where we go, well, yeah, Chris isn't in it, but we, we're not distracted by the fact that he's in it? I don't think, I, to be honest, it might just be a me thing. I, I, I feel like most people aren't that, you know, they, they, they don't care as much that Chris isn't in it. I, 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 I just think it's a shame. You know, it just, it, and it just, it just detracts once you're finished. And there's scenes in it that you think, oh, I would have loved to have seen what he would have said in this scenario. Yeah. And, and that, it's that scene where they're locked up in the, um, in the castle. That's a great scene when Clara walks in. It was the doors unlocked the whole time. That's brilliant. Um, yeah, I, it's just a shame in the, in the grand scheme of things that he's not in it. But I don't think it detracts from the episode. No. I just think maybe now it's just that he's come back and has now actually confirmed I'm not going to do the TV series. That you're like, ah, oh, bugger, that was it. They, he had a script sent to him. And apparently he was a bit mad about it, but he had a script sent to him and then he just got too late in the day and he said, I just can't commit to it anymore. And there are storyboard pictures that they did when yeah. they were storyboarding it with him in it. Yeah. John that was how far along it was. Wow. Um, is, it the, uh, is it this story or the other one that Matt's wearing a wig in? Uh, the next one. The next one. Okay, cool. Because I thought those helicopter propellers at the start could cause a mischief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the 16th is not far away. <gasps> what are your hopes for that? Oh, the 60th. Um, I hope they replace Matt Smith with a doctor that doesn't exist, just so <laughs> he knows what it feels like. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I said, because we discussed, we sort of touched upon this with the uh, announcement that Russell's coming back, and I think that they won't really do anything to celebrate 60 years of Doctor Who. I think they will just treat this as, no, we've got a new Doctor, this is the jumping on point for a whole new era of Doctor Who. And I think maybe that is what needs to happen. Um, because I don't think, obviously there's affection from us as fans, but I don't think there's a massive public affection for Doctor Who as much as there was back in 2013. Mm. So I think, you know, the idea of saying, oh, here's Doctor Who's 60th anniversary and here's Sylvester McCoy coming back. <laughs> you know, we'd love it, but I don't think that's what the programme needs in order to move on and secure, hopefully, another 60 years. I think, if I've not been lied to, I know what happens in, in part of the 60th. Um, yeah. So, um, I'm not I know, this, you know, I know, it's because it happened in the foyer downstairs about three hours ago. Oh. And I, I've been, yeah, I've been told by somebody who I would reliably trust the information from um, what the rough plan is for the 60th and how that ties in or doesn't tie in to the first Russell series. Oh my God, is, is Peter Purvis in the series? Yeah, he's back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter Purvis is back. Yeah, it's the adventures of, uh, the adventures of Peter Purvis in space and time. That'd be amazing. Um, so, I mean, Stephen I don't know. Taylor returns. Stephen Taylor returns, yeah. I, With I the panda, what was the panda's name? High five. High five. High five. I don't know for sure, but That's I think. That's a big finished box set, if ever I've heard one. Come on, that I know, if they can do the new Earth box set. Yeah, they why, can definitely why have do we got Stephen Taylor and High Five? Yeah. Yo. So with the BBC centenary coming up, do you think that they would tie in a celebration of the BBC Doctor Who with the 60th as well? Or do you think they'll do anything special with either of them? Yeah, that's quite difficult because obviously it's Jodie's last episode. But well, actually, you know, I was going to say, well, they're not going to do anything to distract from Jodie's last episode, like bring back an old Doctor. But then I remember what happened in Twice Upon a Time. They brought back an old Doctor. Twice Upon a Time? Yeah. <laughs> Corey's last story. No, I can't remember it. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But apparently the first Doctor, was, well, 
Apparently, the first Doctor was in that story. No. Yeah. I thought it was just like a really weird... Fever dream. Fever dream, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how you should take it. You should take it as that is the crazy regeneration ramblings of the That's how I look at it. That, thinking, that none of that actually happens. Because it, it very nicely erases that entire story <laughs> from everyone's memory. There's a really good edit, actually, of um, yeah. the series 10 finale ending with him going into the TARDIS and regenerating into Jodie and cuts out the entirety of Twice Upon a Time, which is greatly needed from everybody's, everybody's combined knowledge of the show. Um, cool. No well, offence to David Bradley. No offence to David Bradley. No, no, of course not. It's just, no no offence to David Bradley. It's, just it's not his fault that, it's not his fault that, that he's script. in that story. Um, yeah. Uh, yo, yeah. Well, uh, just on David Bradley, one of the great moments in the 50th year was perhaps David Bradley seeing Matt Smith in the TARDIS. Oh. That is, that is absolutely bang on. Unfortunately, some compositor forgot to put uh, yeah. Matt Smith behind the console or, or, or something like that. Yeah, it's, a bit, it's a janky shot, isn't it? Is he like in front of the time rotor or something Something weird, weird like that, like yeah. That? Yeah, I mean, That's to, like, be oh, fair, come on. to be fair, and I want to give Matt Smith some credit here because, you know, I think he's a very, very good Doctor Who. Yeah. I think he's very good. And I, I sometimes don't think he gets the praise that he deserves for being the Doctor that came after David Tennant. Yeah. Like... Man. That's a, you know, that must be really daunting for him in that story to think, my God, David Tennant is the doctor that everyone of this era yeah. really thinks of. Yeah. And now I've got to work alongside him. Mm. You know, that big sand shoes to fill. It would be like if Tom Baker had turned up in the five doctors. Mm. How would Peter Peter Davison f- would have felt? I think he probably would have been <laughs> probably would have been alright, to be honest. Right. I don't know. <laughs> I uh, but on Matt Smith, the fact I mean, how busy was he? That in that period, that he found time to do all that kind of stuff. Like, mm-hmm. credit to him. I mean, doing Doctor Who, I'm sure, is hard enough at the best of times. But when you're appearing in that, you know, crappy compositing aside, it was yeah. clearly something they just shot. Yeah. Like, you know, Matt, if you've got five seconds, he just did stand on this green screen. He stand on the screen, yeah. green screen and look plaintively up, if that's all right. You know, and that, I mean, all doctors end up getting injured at some point. They have knee surgeries, they have problems with their back. You know, all that kind of stuff. But for Matt to have run himself down like that. And he did a film as well. And he did a film at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, he was really busy. Yeah. No wonder he was like, I'm leaving at the end of this year. That's it, I'm done. And I don't know if it was just me, just me, but but when I watched (laughs) the 50th, I thought, God, you look really, really skinny. Really? He just looked gaunt in his face. Mm. I thought, God, are you just wearing yourself out? God. Can we end on a slightly more positive note than that, if anybody else has got something yeah, else? Yeah, there's three regenerations in the 50th. Yeah. In that year. Three regenerations. It's a, yeah. It's McGann that. into John Hurt, John mm. Hurt into Chris Eccleston, sort of, mm. and then um, Matt into Capaldi. Yeah. It's, uh, it wouldn't have been a 50th anniversary year without at least one regeneration, you know? Yeah, I think that's, that's kind that's of, it's, it's sort of like the point of the show yeah. is that every couple of years, We'll change it up. Yeah. And so it's kind of, it's a staple of the show and so on. Yeah, we're starting a new, yeah, we've got to 50 years and now it all begins again. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. Which is prophetic. Yeah. You know, it's just, yeah, it just works. Yeah. It works really, really well. Um, well, I think we have more than exhausted the 50th anniversary as a uh, reservoir of talking bollocks. <laughs> um, <laughs> So and moaning about Stephen Moffat. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know how much of the 50th anniversary we actually reviewed in the last, you know, hour, but yeah, whatever. I feel like we just didn't really talk about that story. No, no, no. After, no. after saying, yeah, we didn't talk about Queen Elizabeth. She's in it. She is in it. There's a horse that turns into a zygon in it. And that That's horse cool. was in. Um, it's the same. Ho- yeah, the same horse that was in. Day of, the, uh, Day of the Doctors in. So come back to Pandorica next year, where that horse will be here signing and doing <laughs> photographs. <laughs> Thank you all very much. It's been lovely to be back at a convention and doing live stuff. So cheers, guys. Thank you very much. (coughs) And if you want to pay me a bit of money, I'll tell you about the 60th. And if you want to see Sylvester McCoy's actual screen used handkerchiefs, go and see Jonathan Toplow at the back. back. If you want to see a screen used prop from the show, go and see that man. Five quid for a photograph. (laughs)